Hello, this is Jack from tofluency.com and welcome to this lesson where you are going to learn vocabulary related to cars and to driving. So I'm going to do this by showing you various videos of people doing things in cars and I'm going to explain what they're doing and give you the right vocabulary and phrases to use so that you can talk about driving cars as well. Now, to make the most out of this video, be sure to check out the description so that you can see a list of the phrases that we use in this lesson. And I'm also on my website going to give you some extra examples. So click the link in the description to get those examples so you can better understand these phrases. So before you start driving, there are a few things you have to do. You have to get your keys. Either find them <laughs> in your house if you constantly misplace them, or you need to take them out of your pocket. Then you need to unlock your car, open the door, and then get in the car. Now, once you're in the car, you can see here the person putting on their seatbelt. So you put on your seatbelt. You can also fasten your seatbelt. Now, you'll hear parents say things like, we're not going anywhere until you put on your seatbelt if their children don't want to put their seatbelt on. I have been there. So, we're not going anywhere until you put on your seatbelt. Then you take off the handbrake. So, always remember to take off your handbrake. And then you start the car. Now, if you're ever late for work and you need an excuse, you can say, I'm sorry I'm late. My car wouldn't start. Okay, I'll explain that grammar tense in the description. It's important to know some differences between driving in America and driving in the UK. Now, if you get a car in the UK, it's probably going to be a manual car, which means that you have to change gears. You have to put it into first, put it into second, put it into third, and so on. But if you get a car in America, then it's most likely going to be automatic, which means that you just put it into drive and just go. Now, this was a little bit strange for me at first, but I soon got used to it. And it's so much easier just putting your car into drive and going. In an automatic car, you can put the car into reverse, into drive, into a low gear, or into park. Another difference is the amount of pedals in an automatic and manual car. So in an automatic car, you have the brake pedal and then gas. So you can step on the brake or step on the gas. You'll also hear people say, hit the gas, hit the gas. In manual cars in the UK, you have three pedals. The clutch, which you need to step on in order to change gears. You have the brake and then the accelerator. So in the UK, we say step on the accelerator. In the US, we say step on the gas. There are various buttons on the dashboard that do certain things. A lot of the time we can use the phrasal verb to turn on, okay, or put on. For example, turn on the radio, turn on the AC, turn on the heating. Turn on the hazard lights. And you can also turn up and turn down. Turn up the radio. Turn up the heating. Turn down the AC. It's too cold in here. Turn down the AC. And if things get a little bit warm, instead of putting on the AC, you can also put the windows down. To put the windows down. In the past, people used to also say, wind the windows down but now everything is more or less automatic. The next thing I want to talk about is the indicator. Now, I find that a lot of people when driving in America don't indicate. This is very frustrating because you don't know where the car is going to go next. And this is useful information for other drivers and for pedestrians. I find that in the UK, people indicate all the time. Now, it might just be where I live in America, but this is something I have definitely noticed. So the noun here 
in the UK is indicators. And in America, you'll hear people say blinkers or turn signals. When it comes to your speed, you can say we're doing 70 miles an hour or we're going 70 miles an hour. So in the UK and America, we use miles per hour and not kilometers per hour. If someone is going or driving too fast, you can say slow down. If they're going too slow, you can say, come on, speed up, speed up a little bit. If you're helping somebody with directions, you can say, turn left here, or take your second right, or go straight ahead at the roundabout, or you missed your turn again. Listen to me. Driving can be a little bit frustrating at rush hour because there is so much traffic on the road. You might hear people say, it's bumper to bumper, or we're not moving at all, or has there been an accident? We're not moving at all. But when the roads are clear and you're in no rush to get somewhere, driving can be very enjoyable, especially if you have good music on the radio, good snacks in the car, and it's not too hot outside, so you can open the windows to bring in a fresh breeze. Once you have finished driving, you take off your seatbelt, put on the handbrake, turn off the car, get out of the car, and then always remember to lock the doors. Here are some other phrases that you might hear. Let's set off at 7 a.m. So to set off means to start your journey. So let's set off at 7 a.m. Or do you think we should set off early morning? Or do you think we should set off before seven? If you're going on a long journey, you can say things like, it's a long drive, let's get a good night's sleep. It's a long drive. And the last one I want to share with you is this, a backseat driver. Now to be a backseat driver, means that you're giving directions and you're constantly telling people how to drive if you're not driving. So saying things like, slow down, turn left here. I'd put it in third gear. You're a bit close to that car in front. If you constantly say things like that, then you are a backseat driver. Okay, I hope you found that lesson enjoyable. If you did, then please click that like button and share it with your friends. And again, check out the description because I'll list all the phrases that I used in this lesson and go to my website to see some other examples too. If you are new here, then subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell. And then download my book, The Five Step Plan for English Fluency. If you want to jump right in, if you want to get started with a premium program, then check out the To Fluency program. I'll leave a link to that in the comment section below. Okay, thank you again for watching. It's great to have you here and I will speak to you soon. Bye-bye.